Good morning on this Sunday, October 1st, and welcome to the Georgia Gang. Governor Brian Kemp calls on business and political leaders to go on record on whether they support the Atlanta Police Training Facility. Also, Georgia GOP senators punish one of their own for going after Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis. And Delta Airlines CEO admits they may have gone too far in revamping their loyalty program. Maybe they were listening to all of us. <laughs> Kathy, Phil, Theron, and Martha are all here. The debate and discussion begin right now. From the Fox 5 studios, the Georgia Gang starts now. At the Atlanta Police Foundation breakfast this week, Governor Brian Kemp called on the business community and all political leaders to go on the record and say whether they support the Atlanta Police Training Facility. Governor Kemp praised Atlanta Mayor Andre Dickens for his leadership on the project. So let's run the table on this. Kathy, I want to go to you first because are Democrats in a catch-22 on this? And what do you make of this alliance between Mayor Andre Dickens and Governor Brian Kemp? Well, it's a lot to unpack, I think. Um, you know, the, I think the question should not be whether we should have a police training facility, although I know there's people who disagree, but it's whether it should be in that location. And I think that's the crux of it. That's when the, you know, kind of people in the middle sort of start falling off of this conversation. Um, so, you know, I think it makes it hard, though, because that's not the question that's on the table. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes it difficult for um, Democrats to sort of thread the needle on this. But, um, I, you know, I think Senator Ossoff has, has named it. I think he's done a good job on that. And, you know, and I think turning this into a statewide issue, a statewide political issue, obviously we've got a campaign season coming up and people will do that. But really, when other people meddle in the business of the city of Atlanta, it tends to annoy me. Phil? Well, it's meddling in the city of Atlanta. It's the capital of our state, and it's the economic engine of our state. The governor was absolutely right. It was a good speech. Uh, we need the police training facility since uh, the last mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, gutted the police department, and we're trying to rebuild. And I'm glad there's this alliance and this one issue between uh, Mayor Dickens and, and the governor. And uh, I think that uh, the, the, the left, the hard left, is, doesn't like this no matter what. Environmental concerns were addressed. Uh, I think it was a pretty good transparent process uh, and so I think that uh, we need it for the first responders. Um, it is uh, amazing that some of these Democrats will just use any anything, uh, especially Senator Warnock, to try to sabotage this. Darren, you know, if you look at the members, the board members of the Atlanta Police Foundation, it really reads like a who's who of all the mm -hmm. biggest and best companies um, in Georgia, but yet you don't hear much from the business community on the Atlanta Police Training Facility. What's the PR dilemma for them here? Because they expect their employees to live and work in a safe city. Well, I think there's a lot to unpack. And you're right, Kathy. And there's so many politics involved in this. But I think we got to take the politics out of this issue. You know, public safety is a nonpartisan issue. Mm -hmm. But when you have the governor of Georgia, who's a Republican, who is making an effort to work with this Democratic mayor, and when he says what he says, notice that he's in a position to say that. But I think that's not what the mayor is saying. The mayor is saying that we need everyone to work together to make sure that this process is transparent and that if they want to do a referendum, let's figure out the legal pathway. But, Lori, you and I have talked about this. These board members, these women and men who got on these foundation boards had no idea that this was going to become the sort of issue that it has become. Mm -hmm. And so they are staying quiet because of their safety. They're staying quiet because I'm sure their corporations have instructed them that until we receive more leadership and more instructions, we're not going to get involved. And a lot of these board members have been attacked. I mean, I know some of them personally, where their houses have been, you know, just, uh, been vandalized, people have shown up. And so it is a political dilemma. But what the governor also knows <laughs> is that he can say certain things that a Democrat Democratic mayor leading this Democratic city cannot. And so kind of putting them on notice was sort of a strategy that he is pushing. I just don't think that that's the city's posture. I think the city's posture is let's let the courts come back on what they're going to decide. Meanwhile, we'll stay transparent and we'll figure this out moving forward. Martha, there was a lot of praise when former Mayor Kasim Reed and former Governor Nathan Deal worked together. There was a lot of praise from both sides. We're not seeing that. We're not seeing a lot of praise coming to Mayor Andre Dickens for working with Republicans on this issue. Well, I think as they work together more, you might see more of that as time goes on. Um, you know, I think your thread the needle point is a really good one, Kathy, because you saw Senator John Ossoff this week try to thread the needle. And, you know, I, I think it's the one time in his career that I, I think he failed. You know, I like him a lot. I mean, he is somebody that I think is doing a really good job, but I think he was trying to have it both ways. And this is one of those things that you can't do that. And here's the thing, you talk about the people on the boards having concerns, because I think that the average person 
and the average board person cannot believe there is a controversy over this this Atlanta Police Training Center because of what we went through in 2020, what people said they wanted in 2020, which was a better trained police force. It's in a location that was already a police training center many years ago that was dilapidated and kind of deserted. I think that the average person looking at this, and this is why Andre Dickens, I think, has stayed so strong on this, because when he goes out and talks to his constituents, what he's hearing is, we need this. Well, we saw the polling this week in the AJC, but Theron, let me ask you, because I thought Senator John Ossoff, I thought he was bold in coming out. I mean, he Absolutely. was the, the highest ranking Democrat really to come out to say, look, we need this. It's up to Atlanta to figure it out. And look, you know, we, we've been in politics for a very long time. It is rare. It is rare. I work for Congressman John Lewis. I work for former Congressman John Barrow. Federal officials do not get involved in local issues, all right? State officials sometimes don't really get involved in local issues, but we have a unique case here with this governor and the Republicans want to be strong on public safety. And so we unfortunately and fortunately walk a different balance on the Democratic side. Democrats support public safety. We want well-trained police officers. We want the people to be able to de-escalate hostile situations. But we have an electric on our side that believes that there are some transparency concerns. There's a little bit of distrust with some police officers. Let's not act like we haven't had police officers kill unarmed That's why black they men. need better training. I get it. So, <laughs> but what, what, I, what I'm saying to you, but, but to Lori's question, I think Senator Ossoff was brilliant. Look, he said. I'm going to take this off the table for Republicans. Because guess what? If he had not said anything, they would have said that this senior senator from Georgia is weak on public safety. So he Warnock took that, is no help at he, all, the other on. senator. Let, we'll get to Warnock in a yeah, second. Yeah, you don't want so, to talk about it. No, him. I can talk about Warnock all day. Well, we've but, talked about Warnock. But, I yeah, but, but also, I think you're right. It was bold. It was brilliant. You take the issue away uh, from um, them. And what he's saying is, I support a public training facility, but I don't know if I'm going to get involved in where it should go. But I do life. think the partnership, to, to say that Democrats should have a difficult time with the governor having a partnership with the mayor. No, no um, I'm not saying that. Okay, because it's happened. You know, it's, it should I, be. I've orchestrated it. You know, I, I mean, if you, if you, I know. you go ask Governor Kent. <laughs> no, <I know. laughs> he, he can tell you who's orchestrated well, and, and relationships it is between. And supposed to be a nonpartisan mayor, too. <laughs> it is a nonpartisan mayor. He knows what I said. He is a Democratic mayor. I mean, for Christ's sakes, he's about to have a huge role in the Goodness DNC sakes. convention. Goodness sakes. It's Sunday. Goodness sakes. Goodness sakes. <laughs> Goodness sakes. Um, but no, I'm, let me be clear. I'm all for the governor and the mayor working together. But we, on this show, have to understand the dynamics and the politics of it. I want to move on just because we've got another issue brewing. At the time of this taping, we're not sure if a government shutdown is going to happen, but it's imminent. Phil, I want to go to you on this because we're, this never bodes well for Republicans. No, it hasn't in the past. And um, I'm hoping that uh, they could have come to a compromise as we tape. We don't know that, as you say. Um, I do think that uh, the Democrats, of course, are no help whatsoever. Uh, um, yes, it's true that the Republican House Caucus um, has like four votes they can uh, not lose. And I understand the, uh, the conservatives' frustration because of the fact that uh, inflation and the, the spending of trillions of dollars over the last few years, uh, have c we've come to this situation where we don't have any fiscal control. But you got to run the government. And so I hope that some compromise can be, uh, the conservatives have made their point, but I hope some compromise can be affected. Kathy, are Democrats just sitting back and watching the Republicans fight this out, or what's their <laughs> role here? I would. I mean, I, I think, you know, you've got four or five Republicans who are holding the entire country hostage, exactly. uh, who, you know, are running head on into a brick wall to prove their point, and I think that's not good politics in the scheme of things. So I think Democrats are going to just let this go on for a while because they're ready to play. Uh, you know, as soon as the Republican leadership can... They haven't been ready to do anything. Of well, course the they're ready Democrats, to do things. The Senate Democrats, I hate to say this, did pass a continuing resolution this week, okay? Um, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with what was in it, but they did actually pass something. But here's the problem. Grover Norquist, of all people, you know, a very conservative, said, look, we got to face the facts. We've got one one part of this three-part equation. We've got the House, we don't have the Senate, we're gonna have to compromise, even he said that. And you know, it keeps going back to the 420,000 voters that didn't turn out for the runoff in 2021 that gave the Democrats the, uh, you know, the control of the Senate. We don't have and any that's why we're there, there is no way that you all can really, with a straight face, come on this show and blame this on the Democrats. I blame it on the, Biden the, and the, 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 the No, no, this is, this is, the Democrats have no 
blame in this. That's absurd. The person in the House who was running the House of Representatives, by the way, is a Republican. His name is Kevin McCarthy. This is a man who had 12 rounds of voting. You all know when you put him up to be Speaker that he was going to have a problem leading this caucus in this in this House chamber because they didn't want him in the first place. We sat on this show for weeks and talked about how he are we going to have... He hasn't had trouble up until now, and, then, and we don't know what's going to happen. And, and when you have your own members of your party, it's not Democrats, but to Kevin rebelling against you. That's not a Democratic problem. That's a Republican's problem. They are failing to govern this country right now. All right, I got to go. Coming up, Republican senators punish one of their own for attacks on the Fulton County District Attorney, Fonnie Willis. Stay tuned. Have a question or comment for the Georgia Gang? Email them at georgiagang at foxtv.com. Republican State Senator Colton Moore is no longer a member of the Republican caucus after members voted to oust him over his criticism of Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis. Senator Moore called for an emergency special session to investigate Willis after former President Trump and 18 others were indicted in the 2020 election controversy. Any surprise here, Martha? And we should say, not out of office. He can still vote. He just out of the Republican caucus. Yeah, no. I mean, he was raising money and spending it against his, his, his colleagues. I mean, there were a lot of things that were happening here and basically every person that had an opinion on this thought he couldn't call a special session and you sometimes you have to accept defeat and live to fight another day i don't think they were wrong in doing this kathy well I, you know i think they've got a few more things uh you know in their quiver i think you know the next step is to take him off of committees and and to start you know kind of ratcheting down because the real point was Probably people didn't mind if he beat up on Fonnie Willis, but what they really minded was that they're beating up on each other. <laughs> well, meanwhile, the judge in the racketeering case of the 19 defendants is calling for increased protections for all potential jurors in the case. With all the threats and shenanigans, it's still going to be hard to see jurors, Theron. Well, I mean, this is something that we've talked about, and these jurors, when they're selected, they deserve this protection. I mean, everyone deserves a fair trial. These 19 defendants got to have an impartial jury that doesn't feel that they are being threatened and attacked um, by people who want a certain outcome. And I think that I keep saying this. I think that Donald Trump has created a level of fear, and he's attacked his people. Uh, have attacked jurors and attacked people who have opinions, expert witnesses, and so they need this protection and we got to make sure that this trial is fair. And these jurors should not be scared to basically be able to hear the evidence and to hear the prosecution's case, to hear the defendant's case, and make a judgment call. And so I think this is a really good step for the county. Phil? So the left hasn't attacked or smeared or criticized anybody? Come on now. It's our, both our sides. We, 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 well, let me, let me have my say. We okay. listen to you. The, the point is that this is a witch hunt. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, I, I don't know of any Republicans or other people that really like D.A. Fonnie Willis. It is a witch hunt. Even I've quoted Democrat attorneys that are top attorneys uh, in this area saying that this RICO uh, indictment is falling apart already. And so um, I think, yeah, uh, the grand jury is supposed to be secret. Uh, nobody likes to get threats. And so that's fine. You didn't praise Fonnie Willis when she was running for office? Oh, I thought she did great her first 12 months. Okay. She went after so gangs, and then she just sold out okay. to the left. Just want to right. make sure our viewers Sold out. So yeah. let's move on, because after all the attacks and mudslinging by former President Trump, Governor Brian Kemp said he would still support him if he's the Republican presidential nominee over President Biden. Martha, your thoughts on this? Were you surprised, or is, just, is the writing becoming on the wall that, you know, more than likely former President Trump will become the Republican nominee? Um, you know, I have been undecided on this one as mm. far as being a voter. Uh, I'm going to vote my conscience in the primary, but I said to my listeners this week, I'm kind of softening on the idea <laughs> that it looks like President Trump may be the nominee. Uh, but uh, I do think there's still not a vote that's been cast, and it's not surprising to me that Governor Kemp, with his number one goal being having Republicans showing this is a Republican state in 2024, saying this, that doesn't surprise me at all. So, um, look, it's it, I still say not a vote has been cast, so we don't know what's going to happen, but it looks more and more like it's going to be Biden-Trump again, which I just have to say, is this the best we have to offer? Kathy, were you surprised to see Governor Kemp's comments? Uh, I'm not sure I'm surprised, but I... Uh, but I question the political judgment of even getting into it at this stage of the game, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I, I just think that Donald Trump broke our country. We're working really hard to put it back together, and it's taking a lot longer than one would hope. And to say that you're going to dis, you know, disagree with this guy all the time, and then, but you'll support him when he gets there, 
I don't know. I might have waited until I, after I gotta, the primary. I got to say, Donald Trump was a symptom of things that were already happening. Donald Trump did not break the country. Okay, there was lots of things that happened. There was election denying going on before Donald Trump. There was all these things going on before Donald Trump. This all cannot be laid at his feet. He I normalized feel, crazy. Well, let me just be really clear. I agree. He normalized crazy. Of course, you do. people <laughs> are doing things that have never been done before yeah. in terms of public that, behavior, that's, that's, behavior that, and government. That's crazy talk. No, it's one not. thing. Brian Kemp, I think, was very smart politically because the polls show overwhelming support for Donald Trump. I think he will get the nomination barring and some unforeseen too, circumstances. And if he runs against, if Kemp runs against John Ossoff, he needs the base united. And so it only makes sense to say I, I'd support the nominee. All right, moving on. Vice President Kamala Harris landed in Metro Atlanta as part of her Fight for Our Freedoms college tour. She spoke at Morehouse College and discussed gun safety, climate change, and voting rights with students. What did you think of her message there? Look at that beautiful black woman just standing up there as a vice president of this country. That's just wonderful. No, I think it was good that she was at Morehouse College. I mean, um, people in attendance really felt like she talked about issues that they care about. Climate change, she also talked about gun violence. She talked, ab talked about how we need to have a sensible vote around dealing with gun violence in this country. And gun safety is a big issue as well. And the thing that I think that the administration is doing is that they're deploying her in a very strategic way. Uh, there was a lot of criticism early on about is she being properly used? And so now you see her going around talking to HBCU, she's talking to minority business owners, she's still talking about things that are going on at the borders, she's talking about you know bringing people together, bringing this Biden coalition together. So I think ultimately the fact that Georgia is getting these visits shows that we are in play and that the Biden administration is taking us very seriously. Phil? Well, that's nice that any vice president comes to visit, but she didn't say anything about the border. My goodness, it's an open border. It's, it's the worst situation that we've ever seen with people we don't know coming in, streaming in. And you know what really was offensive when she came here? She had the, the, the liberal lie had to be repeated that voter suppression is here. It's hard to, hard to have people to vote here. It's, it's a lie, and we need to keep pushing back on that. And um, ask a lot of the, uh, the black voters that have been uh, voting in record numbers over the last few cycles. I think she did a good job. Kathy. <laughs> I can say so much about elections and I'm looking forward to 2024, but I, you know, I think that we have a lot of challenges with voting in this state. Nobody's gone back about Senate Bill 202 and evaluated whether the goals that have been accomplished or the expenses that were associated got the job done. And I think that um, she's right to address suppression? it. Do you, do you think there's voter suppression? Well, I in this think state? if you if you look at the voter challenge law that allows anybody to bring thousands of people forward to challenge without any evidence that they've done anything wrong, I think you can say uh, that people are trying to suppress people's <laughs> votes. Martha. Well, that was my biggest thing that I didn't like about what she had to say, is that the numbers don't back up what she's saying, and she continues to repeat the same thing, just like Joe Biden says he cut the deficit by $1.7 trillion, when in fact the deficit this year is going to be $2 trillion. And so, you know, we've got this going on, but the real reason why she came here is because within her numbers, her polling, her biggest problem is with black people. Black people do not like her, especially black women do not, do not like her, and she has much lower numbers. And I'm not talking about less than 50%. I'm talking about she's in that 60 to 70% range, which is a problem if you're a Democrat voter. Theron, 15 seconds to No, respond. I'm good. I mean, I, look, this, 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 this is the thing about why, as, a, as women, I would think that they would celebrate the fact that we've ever, never had this before, that a woman is the Vice President of the United States. And I've talked to a lot of women, my mom, my wife, my people, some of the biggest critics of women are women. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so yes. to say that she's not liked by yes. black women, that is totally false. The black women that I know, and I think I talk to black women more than anybody on this show, they like Kamala Harris. All right, we'll leave it there, folks. Coming up, Delta admits it made a mistake in its revamp of the SkyMiles program we'll discuss in the next block. Join the discussion on the Georgia Gang Facebook page and watch past episodes on the Georgia Gang YouTube channel. Another misstep in the rollout of Georgia's medical marijuana program, the state's Department of Public Health admits it overestimated the number of people registered for medical marijuana cards by a lot. <laughs> the number is more like 14,000, not 50,000. The two licensed companies for dispensaries can't be happy about these numbers, Phil. Well, this is a total embarrassment to have uh, have that um, uh, mistake made. Uh, I'm glad finally we have the dispensaries. Uh, I think there's about eight now around the state. We've needed this for years. There's been too much of a delay. A lot of patients that need it uh, couldn't get it. And so uh, I hope we're getting this right. Kathy? 
Well, I'm just glad the State uh, Department of Health isn't in charge of voter registration rolls because we'd be in a mess. <laughs> um, I think that, you know, during COVID, and, and now with this, we can see that they really don't have what it takes to keep track of the numbers that need to be taken track you of. Know, I, I mean, to... public health is about knowing what's going on, and, and they data. frequently don't. Well, and I have to wonder if they're having the same kind of problem the Department of Labor's having. They have antiquated systems that need to be updated. I mean, he just, the Department of Labor just got a big grant to be able to upgrade their systems. And I think that with the problem we have, whether it's the IRS using 1986 software or what happens at other state levels, is that they've got this antiquated system and they're not keeping up with the times. Wait Let, a minute, can I say something yes. about that? So we have Republican leadership here and we did previously in Washington who kept cutting budgets and not investing in infrastructure. So when you say people don't have updated software or updated oh, it's equipment, always the Republicans this goes, fault. Well, no, <laughs> it is the Republicans fault because <laughs> when you start giving back money instead of investing it into programs that need investment, budgets this, are is, priorities. this is the result you get. Budgets are priorities. All right, Public I'm going to move on to everybody's favorite subject. Atlanta's hometown airline is rethinking the changes it announced to its loyalty program. Delta CEO Ed Bastian telling Atlanta Rotary they probably went a little too far and moved too fast and will announce some modifications. There, and this is why um, Ed Bastian really is a well-respected CEO. He admits when mistakes are made and he works to correct them, and this really has been a PR nightmare for Delta the past couple of weeks. Well, as a fellow Rotarian, a <laughs> member of the Atlanta Rotary Club is where he had that conversation, and shout out to the Atlanta Rotary Club that does a great job every week of getting oh, yeah. the best and the brightest of people, women and men from all over the area. What I was really surprised about is when asked the question because I mean he's doing it that Monday after you know he had just made this announcement you're right Ed just dove into it and to basically say you know we do media training right you probably don't really want to admit it was a mistake <laughs> but for him sometimes it, sometimes but the way he did it was that like hey we've sort of ripped the band-aid off we knew that there was going to be a reaction we didn't know it was going to be this intense but we maybe have moved too fast so we're going to go back and we're going to revisit the program so while my plea for 360 is still not working, Kathy, <laughs> still, I'm still diamond, I think that Delta now will analyze the responses from people and then you're going to see kind of them meet in the middle. Martha? Yeah, I'm glad he did it too. I mean, it's, it is, I like to see more of this. I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Here's I'm gonna. Here's how I'm gonna fix it. I don't. I hope they don't make the sky lounges all crowded again, though. <laughs> Kathy. Well, I fly a lot. This is very annoying to me and and to my circle of friends. And one of the things that people are concerned about is in his message, he said, you know, we went too far. We went too fast. Well, if we're just gonna have a slow, slow drip, drip of the same mm -hmm. pattern, you're not gonna get yourself out of the problem. I think they need to take a really hard look at what they're doing. They need to get rid of Tom Brady doing that. In the the same week was just a poke <laughs> in both eyes um, and and really think about what it means to have loyal customers because we pay a huge premium for Delta Airlines in this market and um, you know I think the city of Atlanta needs to look at it we need more competition at the airport I got places to go and I do not want to spend it there uh, at, at the level that we're having to pay here in Atlanta. Phil. Well, I think you are making sense in a lot of your points there. You're agreeing I mean, a lot. I, 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 think we, uh, <laughs> I think it's the panelists on the show have all agreed. Now, Ed Bastian hasn't done anything yet, so I'm, we, I want to see what he's actually going to do. I don't know why you said probably went too far. There's no probably about it. <laughs> and uh, I, I think... I think that what stung Delta the most, and, and this is why, to his credit, he is trying to, to fix this, uh, supposedly, uh, you know, if it's cash over miles, that did not sell with the, with the people that use Delta. I mean, it is a Sky Miles program. That's so. right. I'm happy to be on the board. I could have helped with this. <laughs> you know, if Tom Brady was on the in the discussion and he Kathy, let that go. We are go. still mad at Tom Brady. Yeah, why I'm going to be mad at Tom Brady yeah, forever. Do not, do As not, a Steelers fan, I'm with you. Do not yeah, try. And Tom I Brady. think these corporate boards need crisis communication. Yeah, folks. I, we all board, agree on so, that. Yeah. All right. One of us. Yeah. Coming we'll up, help. Winners and losers, stay tuned. Time now for the week's winners and losers. All right, Kathy, we'll start with you. Well, I'm going to just do two real quick um, winners. Um, Sally Bethay, former executive mm -hmm. director of Upper Chattahoochee River, or Chattahoochee River Keepers, uh, wrote a book called Keeping the Chattahoochee on why it's important to, to protect local ecology. Simultaneously, the Georgia Department of Environmental Protection, which is nominating the Okefenokee Swamp for World Heritage status, um, are two great uh, developments for our state. Nice. Phil. 
I went up to Cartersville the other day and I got a winner and that's the Savoy Automobile Museum. It is a great venue, went to a networking venue, but it is great for anybody of any age just to go see the history of cars. They have all sorts of exhibits. And uh, secondly, uh, we didn't get to Democrat Senator uh, Raphael Warnock. Um, he's actually in opposition to the other Democrat Senator, John Ossoff, because he's been sabotaging uh, the police training facilities and pushing back on uh, Mayor Dickens of Atlanta, claiming there's not transparency, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, loser, stay out of it, Warnock. Theron? All right, there were five recipients this week of the uh, Monica Kaufman Pearson Rice Award, but I want to highlight two women. Uh, first, Lisa Ram, who's now at WABE, formerly with Fox 5, and our very own Alexis Scott. So, yes. Alexis, we miss Congrats. you, we love you, congratulations. Also, want to give a big shout out to Ty Spears, who had an autism golf tournament this week for his son, Jaden Spears, uh -huh. and it was really good. And then also, condolences to Reverend Clarence Teddy Williams in Savannah, Georgia. He's a pastor of a church down there. Uh, remember him being there for us when I was working for John Bear, He passed away in a car accident suddenly this week. Oh, geez. Okay, Martha. So I just want, I'm wearing pink today because this is the first day of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I have many friends and, and loved ones who um, are, are battling the disease right now as well as uh, have died from this disease. And so we've got a lot of work to do, but we've done a lot of work. And um, uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein passed away. Uh, she was the longest serving female senator. Didn't agree with her on anything, but, um, you know, uh, condolences to her family. All right, and I'll say kudos to Clayton County Schools for adding classes on Saturdays in the core subjects for students who may have fallen behind due to the pandemic. Perhaps other school systems are doing this as well, but let's hope some of these students will take advantage of the added classes. Have a great week. See you next time. Mm -hmm.